All right, what's up guys? Welcome in. Today, we're building a PC. This PC is going to be a medium level gaming and streaming PC. I'm actually building this to take across town to somewhere with better internet than my own so that I can stream there. All right, so first things first, we got a list of parts here. We've got a Ryzen 7 3700X. We got a V550 Tomahawk motherboard. We've got 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RAM because it's cheap and it's reliable. Crucial P3 drive. That's a one terabyte drive. We've got Vitro V5 cooler, which should be plenty for the Ryzen 7. We've got 750 watt power supply. So that way, if we want to upgrade in the future, we've got plenty of space to do so. Uh, and then we got some some old fans from a previous build. I think there's actually Corsair in this box. I don't know why. They're in a uni box. And then we've got a Corsair 4000D case. And let's get this case out. All right. Nice. This is our case. Definitely smaller than my Lee and Lee cases. Ooh, they, this is a nice touch. On the filter, they put a little like pull tab on the magnetic filter. I'm gonna set that off to the side. The best bench for building out your motherboard. Now, when you get your motherboard out, what you're gonna have usually, you're gonna have some SATA cables. These are used if you're connecting like a hard drive or an SSD. Um, we today are using an M.2 drive, so we're not even gonna need these. They give you a nice MSI logo sticker there. They give you some M.2 screws. Those are important. Don't lose those. Let's get this bad boy out of here. Oh yeah. We're gonna start with the easiest thing. This is an older Ryzen CPU. What that means is the CPU itself has a bunch of pins on the bottom. And it's probably gonna be super difficult to see on that camera. There's a whole bunch of pins sticking off of it. These will drop down into the motherboard. So this is gonna be any Ryzen up into the 5000 series. The newest 7000 series will be more like Intel where instead of the pins on the chip, there'll be pins on the board. Yeah, it's super easy. So there's a hinge pin here. On these CPUs, there's a little arrow on them in one of the corners. And what you have to do is you have to line that arrow up with an arrow that's on the socket. When you do that, it drops right in. Then all you do, stick the pin down, CPU's installed. For me, when I'm installing a CPU, Noctua, NTH1. As far as thermal paste application, every study you can find shows CrossParent has best co coverage. The big thing with application is not really about how you do it. It's as long as you get enough on there to cover the CPU properly. That's all that really matters. So when I do it, I squeeze out about an eighth inch wide little string and we just put a nice cross on there. So that's it, that's all you need. Now this is an air cooler. This is not going to use the stock retention brackets. So there is plastic retention brackets already on here. We're gonna take those off. If you're wondering the kit I have, it's an iFixit kit. Not sponsored, but you know, if they wanna sponsor me, I won't be mad. God dang. All right, AMD chill. They put that screw in there tight. All right, now on this one, the way the retention plate on this works is this comes with a couple of brackets. These are going to mount to this, and then we're gonna screw these brackets into the motherboard. All right, all we're gonna do when we install this, all I'm trying to do is line up, right? So you see the, uh, see the holes here, 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 and here? These screws on this cooler are gonna line up with those. All right, now that it should actually line up, we can actually screw it down. Now all I'm trying to do is push it down and get a couple threads to grab on each, and then we can tighten it the rest of the way down. And we're just gonna go around the edges, tightening it down. So we're trying to get pretty even pressure in the middle. We're gonna go across like you were changing the tire, right? So this corner, this corner, this corner, that corner. Top right, bottom left, bottom right, top left. All right, now these screws not all coolers will have this, but these screws have tension springs on them. And I'm gonna show you guys in just a second what that looks like. So essentially, the spring is what creates the proper tension for the cooler. So these screws will bottom out on the bracket when they're tight enough. So you see the springs? These springs here on these screws are what creates the tension. You screw them down till they're snug. 
and that's it. All right, so we got some Corsair RAM uh, with older gen Ryzen. Usually the highest speed you wanna go with is gonna be 3200 megahertz. With 5000 series Ryzen, um, you could go stable straight out of the box, just about any RAM that's 3600 megahertz. You can run it up to 4000 megahertz, but uh, 3800 and 4000 speed RAM, a lot of time, take some tuning. Somebody's gonna give me shit in the comments below when I post this on YouTube for saying megahertz. Mega transfers per second instead of megahertz. Is that better, YouTube? Okay, that's for you. Well, on your RAM sticks, guys, you're gonna see there's a slot. There's a slot on the motherboard, and all you're gonna do is make sure you line that slot up. And then inserting these is very simple. There's some push tabs here, right? You push the push tabs down. Now for a Ryzen system, you wanna install these. If you only have two sticks and you've got four slots, you're gonna install them in the second and the fourth slot first. If you only have one stick, you would install it in the second slot. Then you just push down till you hear that click. Could you guys hear that click? You're just gonna line it up in the slot, push down evenly on both sides with your thumb. But that's it, that's all you gotta do to install RAM. Once we've got our, our cooler on and our RAM installed, uh, next thing we need to do is put in the storage. So for that, we've got a one terabyte Crucial P3. And the reason I went with that is because right now, this drive, and uh, I can put a link to it, but this drive is like 60 bucks for a terabyte. It is super cheap. On this motherboard here, there are two spots for drives. There's one that's right under the CPU, and there's one down here at the bottom. Now, the one that's right under the CPU is usually going to be the one that you want to use. Um, on most motherboards, the one closest to the CPU is going to be, especially newer motherboards, that's going to be a Gen 4 drive. So it supports faster speeds. On this system, uh, it, has, it comes with some heat spreaders, which is what this is that I'm unscrewing right now. These heat spreaders help keep your drive nice and cool and they do make a big difference. Usually, they'll have a thermal pad on the back. Make sure you remove this plastic. If you don't remove this plastic, this ain't gonna do shit. Always double check and make sure you remove the plastic. Now, as far as installing uh, M.2 drive, all you gotta do, there's a spot right here for it. Line it up in this little tower that's here. Push it in, and then it's gonna stick up in the air like that at an angle. So you can see it sticking up in the air. All you're gonna do, is push down and put a screw in the back of it once you've got it lined up in there, okay? Now that's nice and snug. Now, all we gotta do is stick this fan on here. When you're going to stick the fan on, pay attention to where the wires go. Make things easy for yourself. I am putting it so that the wires for the fans are down at the bottom. So we'll be able to route them right up through the top of the case and out of the way. This type of fan is just held on the cooler with some little brackets. These have annoying little hooks and all you do is you hook these in where the screws would go. Now I can show you guys. So with these fans, you get these little brackets and you're gonna hook it into the back side of the fan. Another note about fans, most fans, unless otherwise noted, the side that the cage is on, right? That's the open side. The side that the cage is on is the direction the air will go. So it will suck air in from the side without the cage and it'll blow air out of that side. But with these, all we're doing is popping them in here and they hook around the edge and these little clips will stretch to get it on there and they'll be nice and snug this is ready to install this is basically a whole computer if you have a cpu that has video output like an intel or any of the ryzen 3000 series 5000 series that end with the letter g any of those cpus have video output so you would be able to plug this thing in and boot it up as is. This CPU does not have video output, so we still need our graphics card. But we're before we put our graphics card in, we're gonna install this into the uh, case. We took these captive screws out, and then it says it just popped. It popped out super easy, actually. And then for me, when I'm building, I just get rid of both side panels at the same time, you know? Just gonna make things easier. There is a couple of drive trays down here. Uh, these drive trays, usually this is where most companies are gonna stick all your extra screws and stuff for the case. Personally, for me, especially because I'm using an M.2, I would rather have this space for cable management. So, oh wait, there's thumb screws. Okay. There's a couple thumb screws under there I found. Let you take it out. Oh, it does let me take it out. W! So if you're using the drive cage, obviously leave it in. 
I, however, will not be using the drive cage because this, you can mount typically in these, you can mount either or the 3.5 inch or the 2.5 inch drives. Um, I don't have any of those going in the system. And even if I did, there's two mounting spots here on the back. Yeah, there, you can see the, the drive bays now. Here's O'Reilly. Hi, you wanna come say hi to everybody? Guys, this is Riley, if you don't know him, but you should know him. What's up? What are you doing? I'm proud of you for coming in here without knocking over the camera or the lights. Yeah, you did a good job. You did a good job. I love you. Okay, I gotta finish working on this, okay? Are you gonna sit back there? There's some, some space for you. Thanks, bub. So we got the drive cage out. These are all gonna be connectors for our front panel up here. So we're not too worried about those right now. We're just gonna tuck them in there. But first things first, let's toss our power supply in here. Power supply is gonna go in the back here. Boom. A little Corsair action there. Corsair is pretty good. Uh, good value for price. I think this unit was like 750 watt. I wanna say it was like 80 bucks. I'm gonna have links when I post this on YouTube. I'm gonna have links to everything, so. This is a semi-modular, meaning that there is two plugs that come off of it, which are going to be, one's gonna be a 24 pin connector for the motherboard, one's gonna be an eight pin or a four plus four pin CPU connector, right? Because these are required for every system. The rest of the cables that come with this power supply are on their own. And the reason to go with a power supply like this is very simple. There's gonna be a bunch of cables you don't need. How many drives you're putting in your system, what type of drives you're putting in your system is what's going to affect the cables that you actually need. This particular case on bottom has a vent for your power supply down low and a filter. So when you install this, you're gonna wanna take the fan that's on it and face it down. Most modern cases are that way. Some cases will not have a hole in the bottom. If they don't have any holes in the bottom for ventilation, you need to flip it over. But for this one, we're going, we're going with it down. When you pull all these cables out to look at them, they should be labeled. Now this one, not labeled, but this one is SATA. Okay, so it's a long kind of squared off plug. That one's a SATA cable. The ones that connect and they're all six pins with the two breakouts, right? So they connect for eight. That's PCIe, that's what we're looking for. Now, one of these cables typically is gonna have a pigtail on it. So there's one eight pin connector, there's a second eight pin connector. You could plug in your GPU with just this. If you have a GPU like my 2070, that's got two eight pin plugs. So it's got two eight pin plugs right here. There we go. Right? So you could connect it like this with just one cable. However, me personally, if I have the extra cables, I'm just going to connect it with the extra cables. All right, when we look on the back of our power supply here, what we're gonna see is all these spots here and they're all labeled, right? So you can see SATA, PCIe, CPU, all on there. The ones that say SATA, that's what you would use to connect drive cables. The ones that say PCI, those are the ones you're gonna use for your graphics card. And then the fan controller that I have, this one is SATA powered. So I'd still use this SATA cable. So now we've got, these are all the cables that I'm gonna need. We're gonna pop this bad boy in here. And then there's holes on the side here that we will line up. These look like these are the right size. Aha, they are. I'm just loosely putting all four of these in here. Then I'll hold it up from the back side as I tighten it down in just a second. It's just four screws into the back of this. And just like before, we're just gonna tighten these in a cross pattern from one corner to the next. You can see these little knobs here, one up here, another one down here, right? Those little knobs are the standoffs. There are holes on the motherboard that will line up. You can see the holes on the bottom there, right? So there's holes there that are gonna line up with those standoffs. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna lower this bad boy in here. Now, if you have a system or a motherboard that came with this plate separate from the motherboard, make sure you put it in this back hole right now. Do it right now, don't wait. You won't be able to do it later. This particular motherboard is called an IO shield, it's built in. So I don't have to worry about that. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna lower it down. We're gonna get that shield lined up in the back there. And then we're gonna line up all the standoffs and pop right in. Now most motherboards have nine of these screws. 
this particular one only the motherboard itself has nine but the standoffs one of them was like a one of them was like a guide pin it's not an actual screw spot in the middle so we only need eight of these screws she do be looking pretty now what we're gonna start doing is routing some of this wiring both of my cables for my GPU I could push up through here and they'll be out of the way so the 24 pin connector is gonna come through this side grommet so the 24 pin connector on your motherboard is usually gonna be up here on the side don't worry this connector can only go on here one way so we'll push this in and then that's just gonna press right into the motherboard now my other connector I need is all the way up here in this top right corner that is my CPU connector right here on the back side of this turn this so you guys can see it so there's a couple holes up here we're just gonna route this up through one of these holes looks like the best one will be this middle one this is the most time-consuming part of any PC build guys is routing cables all I'm doing right now is plugging in this CPU plug on the front side, but my fingers are too fat to fit in here. Oh, I'm real close though. I'm real close from the front side on that one. I don't think you guys will be able to see it very well. But that's kind of the point is that you can't see it very well. So you can't, is that corner cable way up here in the top corner. It's all out of the way. All right, so now so a whole bunch of little wire connectors down at the bottom. A lot of these wire connectors are what comes from the case. So that's these wires in the back. Okay, so there's a USB-C connector right here. I see from my case, there's a USB-C connector. So we're gonna get this one out of the way first. So now my front on top of this case has a USB-C connector. Next, we have our audio cable. Now this one is usually on this far corner. Yep. So on the back side of the case, I'm gonna run this all the way across underneath and out this hole on bottom over here. Now this, connect this connector has one pin that's missing. So all you have to do is line up the missing pin on the plug with the missing pin on the board. There's a USB cable, USB 3.0 connector here on the bottom of the motherboard. So that's the only spot that this connector can go. That's a big wide plug there. We'll just get that connected down there like that. Just a big wide plug right here. And then the last thing we need to connect on the front is gonna be our front panel connectors, which appear to be in this bottom right corner. What I usually recommend for that is look up your uh, look up your manufacturer manual on that motherboard because they're not usually labeled. And then I can even show you guys how to do that. If you don't have a manu if you don't have a manual for something, just look up the manufacturer website. For this one, it's gonna be MSI.com. We know this is a B550 Tomahawk. So we're gonna go products, we're gonna go motherboards, and then we're gonna look for the Tomahawk. B550 Tomahawk. There will be the overview, but we want support documentation and we're gonna download the manual and then on here we're gonna find the front panel connectors on this page this is what we're looking for the JFP one is a front panel connector so we've got wires that come off of this case and they're tiny dinky little wires so this case has has a power switch has power LEDs and has a reset switch and that's it now some cases will have more connectors some cases will have like a hard drive light stuff like that because this case doesn't we had to look these up so we can see the power LEDs in the top two corners of the of these pins right the power switch is the next two pins and the reset switch will be the middle two pins on bottom so once we know that we can run these cables up through here and start plugging them in now these are super tiny and they're on super flimsy pins so you just want to make sure you push them down enough that they're seated all the way and as long as they're seated all the way good to go so now we get to do the fun part. We get to connect the GPU. Now, I know that my graphics card uses two of these bad boys. So I'm simply gonna take two out and we're just removing these plates from the back. 2070 Super, she a thick girl. She been around the block too. We've got this slot on the motherboard here. There's a tab on this, just like we had on our RAM. This little tab here, all I'm gonna do is push it down. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna push this all the way over to the side. We're gonna line up that slot and we're gonna push in until we hear that nice click. And then all we're gonna do is as we hold this up here, we're gonna stick our screws back in on the other side. 
This thumb screw is gonna be the death of me. All right, you know what? Everybody on YouTube does this vertical. I don't want, I don't wanna. I don't wanna, I don't care. We're gonna do it this way. And you know why we're gonna do it this way? Because I was smart enough to set up a bunch of cameras. Once you've got your graphics card in, you just gotta put these screws back in. And if you have fat hands and fat fingies like mine, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So once you got these screws put back in there, only thing we have to do is connect these two connectors, which we already had pulled our wires up for. So we're just gonna take our wire here, stick an eight pin on the first one, and then all you're doing is making sure that it's in there nice and snug. Usually it'll give it a nice little click as well. Sometimes it won't, as long as it's sitting flat all the way in, that's all that matters. And then me, because I like to be overkill, I do use two completely separate plugs. I don't use the pigtails, which is why I should probably get cable mod cables. Cable mod, if you want to sponsor me, hi. I'll build all the PCs for you. And then I'm just going to take and I'm going to zip tie these extra pieces down out of the way. And the biggest reason I'm going to zip tie these down um, to the bottom of the cables here is so that they don't hit the fans, right? Because there's fans on the bottom of my GPU and I don't want these cables in here loose and then bumping into the fans. I could put 140s in the top. Then we could put three Corsair fans in the front. Now this one I'm going to put with the wires down because that will be the easiest way to route them out the back here. fans are in all we gotta do is wire up and then we're ready to boot her up and install windows okay now on this controller it is labeled so it goes one one two three four five six so we want to plug these in in order so that that way when we do any software control it'll light up in the right order I'm happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that. To give you an idea of what you need to do. After you're done building your PC for the first time, right? You're gonna go to Google here and type in Windows Media Creation Tool. Whether you're doing Windows 11 or you're doing Windows 10, it's gonna be the same thing. You're gonna grab this and you need at minimum an eight gigabyte thumb drive. We're gonna go to our downloads, and we're gonna grab the tool, and we're gonna run it. In here, click Create Installation Media for another PC. Windows 10, USB flash drive, Memorex. All the RGB, let's go. Ooh, she's so bright. Now, first boot up a lot of times will take a decent amount of time. Oh, wait, it posted. All right, now we're in the BIOS. Now, unfortunately, I'm gonna cover up the PC. We have a whole new system. We're gonna put a fresh Windows install on it. So we wanna make sure, right now it says boot priority, right? And it's got hard disk as the first thing there. So firstly, I wanna go to storage and see, does it see my drive right there, M2? There's my drive. So we're going to boot to the USB. We're gonna move this USB all the way to the front. And then all we're gonna do is save and exit. This time when it boots, 
we're going to let it do its thing. It's gonna to boot to that thumb drive that's on the back of it, and that's our Windows installer. All right, looks like it's booting to the USB. It is. All we're gonna do is hit next. We're gonna hit install. Gonna say setup is starting. All right, now here, it's asking for the Windows key. We don't have a Windows key. So we're gonna hit, I don't have a product key. Then it's gonna ask you what type of install you wanna do. Now, if you plan on buying a Windows key, which you should, don't steal keys. You can get Windows keys super cheap. Kingwin.com is a very popular site for it. Get a Windows key for like 15 bucks, okay? Uh, depending on what software install you want, you would select it here. Now, me personally, I go Windows 10 Pro. Then it's just terms and then custom install it's going to show the allocate space here this is my drive this is the only drive we have we're going to hit next and then it's going to install windows on that drive now if you had multiple drives you'd want to be very careful when you're selecting the drive that you put windows on the drive you want when it restarts it should automatically tell your pc to change the boot from the usb over to the drive you just installed windows on Now you just go through the normal stuff like any other PC when you first get it. All right, and we're in. Because we do have a AMD CPU, the very first thing I'm going to do is open up Microsoft Edge, and then we're gonna go download Opera because Microsoft Edge is terrible amd.com on the amd site we're gonna go download support we're gonna go drivers in here we're gonna go to chipsets we're gonna go to am4 because that's what the cpu socket is and then we're gonna grab b550 because that's what the chipset on my motherboard is windows 10 now the reason that it's important to install these is pretty simple actually this allows us more options in the power management under windows all right, now it's gonna ask for a restart. We're gonna go ahead and restart. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Tech Power Up and we're going to get NV Clean Stall. Now, because I'm gonna be using this system for streaming and gaming, when I do install the NVIDIA driver here, I'm going to be installing Studio Driver. So we'll open up NV Clean Stall. Now I recommend always just pin this to your taskbar, makes it super easy. But we're gonna go here, we're gonna go manually select driver, show all the options. We're gonna come down 52849 Studio. Now, when we go to install this, the only things I want on here are the display driver itself, the PhysX driver, the HDMI audio, and Microsoft C+. If the graphics card you got has a USB-C Thunderbolt connection on the back of the graphics card, you also would want to select the USB-C driver that's, that's in that list. Once it unpacks the driver, we're just gonna hit perform clean install. It's the third one down on list. And then we're gonna hit install. Now it's gonna open up the actual NVIDIA installer. Scroll through, hit agree and continue. Now you can hit express because it only unpacked the things we wanted, but I still hit custom, I'm paranoid. I like to double check that it only selected the things I want. And then we're gonna install that. Now, if this is your first time installing a graphics driver, don't be surprised, don't freak out. Your monitor is gonna flash on and off. Look at that, look at that timing, baby. Oh, I'm so good, but it's gonna flash on and off. That's very normal. Anytime you're installing a driver, it does say it wants a restart. So we're gonna let it restart after the uh, graphics driver installed. What we want to do is we want to shut it down. Once it's completely shut down, we're gonna turn it back on. We're going to spam the delete key on our keyboard. So as soon as we turn it on, start hitting the delete key on my keyboard. All right, that puts us back in the BIOS. Now, with MSI, this is super simple. I can hit CPU for game boost, and I can hit XMP profile for my RAM. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna take my RAM, it's gonna overclock it up to where it should be. Uh, it's gonna let my CPU use precision boost overdrive. The other thing I do wanna turn on is resizable bar while I'm in here. PCIe subsystems, we're gonna enable it, and it'll turn on that. And for MSI, it'll also turn on the thing right under it, which is cryptocurrency mining. Don't worry about that. That has to be on for resizable bar to work. Then we're gonna save and exit. As long as you have XMP and PBO on, your system's gonna run as good as it possibly can for the money you paid for it, okay? 
All right, guys, that's going to be it. Thank you very much. I appreciate everybody stopping by the stream. We built this live. We showed you guys how easy it is to build a PC. Uh, it took a little longer because I was answering questions and doing all the cable management and stuff, but that's it. It's very simple to build your own PC. I thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe because Riley said so and my chat said so. Guys, tell them to like and subscribe. Rip stream? Wait, did it crash? No! <laughs> Where does the flux capacitor go? That goes in the back of the DeLorean. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's in the shop right now. And I'm dumb. What I tell you guys to do? Pay attention to where the uh, where the things are. And what I do? Ignored it. Ignored my own advice. And this table actually goes from my desk to the wall, so I I can't go around the table. Are you crawling under? Yeah. Oh God. Not okay, let me move over. Move the PC in two seconds. I just for it because. Booty. Yeah, no, you know, how you think I feel crawling on you? Bro, there? no. How you too? <laughs> Are you gonna like sit down so they can see your face or are you just no. gonna No, I'm that neighbor where you can't see the face. There's Erica! Oh, Guys, yeah. check her out. Uh Erica is Erica it... Nicole underscore fit. Erica it... with a K. It's Erica Corals on YouTube though. Oh yeah. Yeah. This this video is for YouTube. Oh. Anyway. Erica Quarles on YouTube. She does uh, leggings reviews and fitness content, so check her out. Anyway, bye. Even now, bye. Oh God, you bumped the camera. I just saw it. I just saw it do a little, a little wobble. Can you repeat all of that? All of it. The last, the last four hours. Absolutely. Super, super duper easy. We'll just do that for you guys. You guys are holes. <laughs>